हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू आई टी के फंडे योर ओन चैनल वीयर वी मेक आई टी इंटरेस्टिंग फॉर एवरी वन सो इन दिस वीडियो वी विल अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट क्लाउड आई ए एम विच इज आइडेंटिटी एंड एक्सेस मैनेजमेंट ऑन गूगल क्लाउड आइडेंटिटी एंड एक्सेस मैनेजमेंट पिटी मच डिसाइड्स हु डज वॉट ऑन विच रिसोर्सेज ऑन गूगल क्लाउड प्लेटफॉर्म और फॉर दैट मैटर एनी अदर क्लाउड प्लेटफॉर्म सो इन दिस वीडियो वी विल अंडरस्टैंड सम बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट बिहाइंड आई ए एम and how it 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 exactly works on a uh, google cloud platform or on any other cloud uh, platform for that matter so without wasting any more time let's get started please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so friends identity and access management has three major parts who can do what on which resources this is self explanatory but before we go into the details of it let's take a real life example suppose you go for a walk in interview in any uh, company so the first thing which you get in that particular company is a visitor id card that visitor id card only allows you to have access to certain areas of the office like the reception uh, the common lobby uh, maybe a couple of open uh, meeting rooms and of course the cafeteria then suppose you get selected in that particular company and you join as a new joiner in that particular company then you will get an employee id card now with employee id card you will have certain elevated access uh, compared to what you had as a visitor now you would have access to library the facilities ca uh, more cafeterias maybe which are on the other floors and then uh, some other uh, sections of the offices which were not accessible by the visitor but still you do not have access to any specific project or any specific area where the projects are running that will happen once you get allocated or assigned to a particular project then you get access to that particular uh, area wherein the project development team sits you can enter into that particular project area or that particular floor where your specific project area is residing but even after having that level of uh, you know access you still do not have all the access suppose for example you cannot enter the server room of your office you cannot uh, enter the admin uh, facility of your office without a special approval so what we are trying to uh, understand here is that you being an identity your access level varies based on the role you have so first you were a visitor then you went as a new joinee then you became a project member and then based on the roles which you were getting your access were getting elevated exactly that happens uh, in uh, iam identity and access management you first have an identity based on that identity you are assigned a role now that particular role which you get decides what set of permissions you will have on certain resources uh, on google cloud now when we talk about identity there are various kind of uh, identities which are which can be used on google cloud the first and the very common is google account suppose you are uh, creating a, a free tier uh, access on uh, google cloud platform what you you, you uh, do it through uh, your gmail account right so your gmail id can be your google account id which you can use secondly you can have service accounts now service accounts are not used by uh, the people uh, these are uh, these service accounts are used by the resources suppose your compute engine suppose there is a server which you have deployed on on your google cloud and that particular server needs to talk to another resource indirectly under the hood then what will happen it cannot happen through your uh, user id for that you need service accounts so that service account will have a special privileges uh, for example if uh, there is a service account with which a compute instance is running and this particular compute instance needs to read something from the cloud storage maybe a file or something then this particular service account will get a specific role which will let this particular uh, service account to read something from that particular specific uh, bucket so what we are trying to see here is that these are different types of identities with which you can access various resources with the roles you get okay so there are also google groups so suppose you want to uh, assign roles to um, multiple uh, people at one time so what you will do you will create a group and in that particular uh, group uh, will be given a certain roles now you it might also happen that you do not have any id at all 
uh, in Google, right? So for that you have cloud identity. So cloud identity is uh, is a service which is provided by Google Cloud with which you can uh, you know you can get uh, you know an identity within Google Cloud even without having a Google account. So that is for the identity part. Now coming to the roles, what are the roles? As I said, when you entered the company as a you know as a visitor, you were given a role of a visitor and that decided that you will have certain amount of access in that office. In a similar way, there are majorly three types of roles uh, which you get. And by the way, roles are nothing but set of permissions because there are thousands of permissions. It's practically impossible to give permissions to you know specific uh, users, right? Because there are so many permissions. So what Google did, uh, they, they created a bucket and in that bucket, they put various permissions based on the role. So there are majorly three different uh, categories of the role which you have. First one is the primitive. Now primitive roles were there in picture when you know there was no IAM on Google Cloud. So there were mainly three types of role. Uh, owner, editor and viewer. Any user who comes on Google Cloud used to get either of these three type of uh, roles. But now these roles were very very broad in nature. The, 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 uh, it used to open a Pandora box. It used to give so much, so much at one time uh, that it, it used to violate the basic principle of security, uh, which is PLP. And what is uh, PLP? PLP means principle of uh, least privileges. Okay. So what does that mean is that any given point of time, you should only give the minimum amount of access required to anybody. Uh, so, so when you get, uh, when, you, when we used to assign an editor role, that editor role used to span across multiple resources. So suppose if I am getting an editor role, I can edit a compute engine, maybe I can edit and do something on the cloud storage and things like that. I can do multiple things as an editor or, an, uh, or as an owner, right? But then came the predefined roles. Now what predefined roles meant was that we narrowed down on the set of permissions you could have, right? So what it did, it helped us uh, give very, very predefined set of roles, very specific set of roles with very set, uh, specific set of permissions to uh, any user. For example, uh, suppose there's a user Scott at the rate gmail.com, that's uh, it's his identity, uh, gets compute instance admin. Now compute instance admin by the name suggests that this particular user will have access as an admin access within uh, compute uh, area only. Okay, so it cannot go, this user cannot go and do something on cloud storage or it cannot, uh, this user cannot go and do something on BigQuery. So that what uh, was meant by coming up with predefined roles. But even with predefined roles, the, uh, you know, the, that, that category is quite broad. Okay. So now if you get admin role, you can maybe start the machine, stop the machine, and maybe you can do anything under the admin role. But what if you do not even want to do that? You want even further narrowed down scope, then you can have custom. Now for custom, you have to create custom roles because pre primitive and predefined comes automatically. Uh, on Google Cloud, but custom role you have to create on your own. So now, suppose there is a support uh, representative who's there to monitor uh, a compute instance, okay? And he is only allowed to restart a machine uh, even only when the, the when, when he sees that the machine has been shut down abruptly or maybe like that. So for that, uh, even under admin, you will narrow it down and give only the restart uh, permissions that, okay, uh, this particular uh, support representative can only restart a shutdown machine or maybe a machine which has crashed, but it cannot spin up a new virtual machine. It cannot do anything apart from that. So that is custom, narrowing it down to the minimal level, which is, uh, you know, which uh, should suffice the uh, requirement. Now, this is about identity and the role. Now coming on the resources. Now for, for understanding the resources part, understand that when I talk about resources, this is your library, this is your cafeteria, this is your office area. So based on what roles you were getting assigned, you were getting more and more access, right? So similarly, the, these are your Google Cloud uh, resources and this is, the, this is called as resource hierarchy. On top, you have your organization. Under that, you can have one or multiple folders. 
within one particular folder you can have one or multiple projects and within one project you can have one or multiple uh, you know maybe a compute engine storage or whatever now when you get a role okay the access will depend on which level you are assigning that role okay because by default this resource hierarchy is like a parent child relationship so take for example at the top is your great great grandfather then your grandfather then your father and this is you now by the law of inheritance you will inherit all the properties which are coming from the top and then you might have your own uh, unique uh, set of properties as well right so suppose this compute instance admin uh, role has to be assigned only to specific one particular virtual machine then it has to be assigned to this particular specific virtual machine but what will happen if we go uh, a level higher suppose this particular uh, Scott user gets compute instance admin access uh, role assigned role on a project now at a project level you can have multiple uh, virtual machines so instead of this one particular machine you can have five different virtual machines so what will happen that at this particular level you will have access to all the different uh, virtual machines uh, which are there under this particular project similarly if you go to folder you will have access at a folder level so you will have access across projects if you go to organization same thing follows so always remember that you need to try to go to the lowest level possible you should you should if you are having a compute instance admin access uh, you need to you know you need to go to the lowest level possible and give it because the resource hierarchy is such that a virtual machine will have its own uh, set of access plus whatever uh, this particular machine has inherited from uh, uh, its parent uh, resource hierarchy so this is the way uh, you know your whole access uh, flows now there are some guidelines some best practices which google suggests first thing is that you should always avoid primitive kind of rules as i said these are very very broad range of categories so you should avoid it you should not give it unless you are working on a sandbox or development environment with a very closely tightly coupled uh, trusted set of people in a team then maybe you can go for it but for a production it's a clear no no you should always go for predefined or a custom role second very important point is principle of least privileges okay because you should always try to go to the lowest level possible third very important point is iam policy what is iam policy iam policy is you know is a binding in which you keep your members and whatever members are there will be combined with the respective roles and combined together you will create your iam policy which can be in a json format so with this particular iam policy can be specifically managed by a different role which is iam admin so friends this is uh, this is the basic fundamental of identity and access management on google cloud but these principles more or less will be applicable on other cloud platforms as well now to in order to explore further i will give the link in the description below for the detailed documentation of of identity and access management so go and check that out so friends i hope you like this video on cloud iam if you did please hit the like button hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you exactly know when i upload my next video let me know in the comment section what you would want to learn next uh, on google cloud and i'll try to add that in my future video so until next time please keep learning please keep hustling bye for now